Greetings, welcome to the channel, I'm Eddie Set Go, and in this video we're talking about my first 600 miles on board the 2021 Yamaha MT-09 SP. So in this video we're talking about my first 600 miles on board the 2021 Yamaha MT-09 SP. I'm almost at 600 miles, the first service is due in the next few days, so I thought I'd do a quick video just to show you how I'm getting on with the bike, anything I've noticed, the things I like about it, anything I don't like about it. The attention to detail, some of the finishing touches, especially down here by the rear sets, I mentioned this in my standard MT-09 video, just some of the quality of the finish of some of these parts, these hard wearing parts where your boots are going to be kicking and scuffing. It really is excellent finish, you know, nice lacquered aluminium there, even the paint along the back of the, the, the rear sets on the pillion. The lacquer of the paint finish is so much better than the, um, the MT-07 I had from a few years ago. I remember with that bike, within a few hundred miles, up to a thousand miles, I had uh, scuffs and wear appearing around where my boots were going, but here it's all really well finished and well put together. Uh, just a couple of things about what I've had done to the bike. Very little at the moment. You can see I've got the standard mirrors still on the front. Um, I am due to put a radiator guard. Uh, when the bike goes in for the first service, I'm gonna get a nice radiator guard put on there. It's always wise to put something just to protect that. Down here, I've got a little set of um, bobbins to uh, lift the bike up onto the paddock stand. And these are uh, uh, by a brand called Bike It. They cost all of about five pounds, which is very cheap. It's about $8 and they're great. You know, really simple. Obviously I've got the gold to match the gold accents on the rest of the bike. I think it fits quite nicely. It's not too garish. And uh, it doesn't take away from this uh, wonderful lacquered aluminum swing arm. There is the official Yamaha tail tidy on the back here, which I think just really balances the bike out nicely. When it comes to the exhaust, I've noticed even a few uh, 2021 MT-09s with the Akrapovic uh, can. And um, you might ask, am I going to put an Akrapovic on this? And I'm quite happy with the stock sound. I really am. This bike does sound awesome. Let me fire it up. It really does sound awesome, this MT-09. Yamaha spent absolutely ages developing this exhaust system to make it aesthetically pleasing to the ear. Obviously the pipes come down underneath the, uh, underneath the can there. Reduces very low, talky grumble when you're just idling. But when you get higher up the revs, it doesn't become deafening. It really is a, a really nice balance of sound. Just have a listen. <laughs> Yamaha then tried 50 different variations of air intake ducts and they actually borrowed a similar design to what you see in church organs and that was the inspiration for the air intakes so a whole heap of developments got into making this stock exhaust system sound as good as it can be and I'm really happy with it I like the way that there's no exhaust can kind of blocking off the alleys, aluminium swing arm it just looks great, it's such a well balanced design so as you can see I'm in riding mode 2 of 4 traction mode 2 uh, that uh, little BC there is braking control. I will do a video about this interface if you're interested in all the dials and gadgets that you've got on the bike. So, uh, but yes, I've been leaving it in mode two, mode three, and uh, I'm not really going into mode one until perhaps after the first service when I can really unleash the fury. Oh, and by the way, the uh, up and down quick shifter on the MT-09 SP is just awesome. <laughs> so good it's a great feeling it really is just so easy coming up and down those gears not even using the clutch just a little flick of the boot or a little press down with your toe to come down the box you don't have to push hard at all on that quick shifter the bike just really clicks into gear so nicely.
So as you might have noticed, I'm not really pushing the bike as, uh, as much as I would like. I'm still in the running in period, the braking in period of this new machine. And the manual does advise to keep the revs you know, below 5,200 where possible. Obviously, I've flicked above that now and again when I've got a bit excited or come down the box and the revs have jumped up a few notches above. But um, in terms of power output, I can't really comment on the power output of the MT-09. Uh, this SP version anyway. If you'd like to see me laughing and shrieking on the standard MT-09, there is my full review in the link above there. You can watch all the uh, the highlights of that, of that ride in that video. But for this SP, I am keeping the revs below 5,200 where possible. Um, but it doesn't take anything away from the experience. I'm still having heaps of fun riding this machine and doing lots of short shifting. One thing I have come to uh, love about this machine straight away is just the handling it's the best handling machine i've ridden it's uh, got that wonderful mix of comfort and performance i probably didn't show you but the rear tire i'm coming close to the edge of the tread on the rear tire already i've only had the bike a few hundred miles and i'm that confident and that comfortable on the bike that i am pushing it you know on those longer sweeping corners but yes the handling of the bike the stock mt09 which i reviewed on the channel I did comment how it was worlds apart from the outgoing model. It has shorter fork tubes, but the same amount of travel, putting a bit more emphasis on the front end, meaning the front end feels more planted. It feels a bit more sure of itself, which means it, it gives you a lot more feeling when you're going around those corners and breaking into those corners. We've got those upgraded KYBs at the front, the Olin's on the rear, and uh, on the few occasions where I have actually pushed the bike, you know, on those long sweeping corners and felt the bike you know, handle all those imperfections in the road and give me feeling through the suspension. It does feel a little bit more quality than the stock MT-09, I will admit. A little bit plusher and a little bit more... This has a little bit more quality, I think, over the stock MT. The stock MT is a wonderful bike, but this MT-09 SP just has a little bit of panache to it, a little bit of bling to it. But uh, yeah, so the suspension setup, you know, the handling, it feels awesome. I don't think I'm going to be able to really appreciate the tech and uh, all the gadgets on this bike until I take it to a racetrack and do a track day. Uh, it's a great place to learn everything about your bike on a track day for sure. But in terms of the braking performance, yeah, awesome. These are four pot Nissins at the front. We've got a single missing at the back but yeah single finger braking going into the corners i know a lot of the rivals like the uh, street triple rs will have brembos at the front even the street triple r has uh, has brembo front calipers but um you know really doesn't take anything away from these nissans on this sp they really do a great job of bringing the bike to a very controlled deceleration i mean these roads i'm just riding around here when riding on the street triples around these areas, the little bumpy country roads just past the quintessential English pub here. It's all a bit bouncy and a bit bumpy. You know, lots of uh, drains and potholes. It feels absolutely sublime on this SP. It really does iron out those bumps. It feels really plush. The seat is super comfortable. The, uh, the SP has that uh, double stitched seat and it really does look quality. And not only that, it has this extra hard coarse wearing rubber on the side of the seat so where your legs are where the pillion legs are going to go that rubbing is going to happen on that rough area so they've really given a bit of thought as to where the bike is going to you know experience those wear points it's just little touches like that which show that Yamaha have really put thought into uh, making sure this bike looks good and maintains its its value over time Lots of short shifting again, and I'm trying to keep the bike below that 5,000 odd RPM. But at the same time, that doesn't uh, slow you down. You can still reach motorway highway speeds during the braking period, no problem. It just feels so balanced and planted. Perfect for any kind of sporty, aggressive riding, but you feel so comfortable on it. You're not, you know, hunched over like on a street triple. There's no real pressure on your wrists. But at the same time, it feels awesome at lean. You can really tip it over and the bike just wants to flip over and carve through the corners. Just drop it down using that uh, quick shifter on those brakes, really slow it down and then...
There's a bit of uh, dirt on the road here, gotta be careful. Lots of farms around here. You can see this bike is just, what we say in the UK here, this bike is a barrel of laughs. This bike is a barrel of laughs, as we say here. And it really is uh, an utter delight to ride because it feels so comfortable. I'm just cruising along now. It's uh, village urban speeds and it's super comfortable. There are little arrows here right next to the gear selector, which uh, change color depending on whether, whether the throttle is open or closed, showing you which part of the quick shifter is ready to engage. It's uh, these little cool touches. If you like your tech, then um, the, the MT-09 and the MT-09SP, uh, they do have absolutely stacks of technology for you to really go nerdy over. Get the manual out and read the manual. The cruise control. The cruise control is something that I didn't think would really matter or I wouldn't be too fussed about. It turns out the cruise control is the thing I use the most on this bike. You know, I really use it so much. Here we go. So cruise control, it engages from I think fourth gear up to sixth gear. If you're going above 20-ish miles an hour, you can engage the cruise control. And it's very simple using this selector here on my thumb. We press the middle button, which then lights up the cruise control activation systems. So they are now ready. And then all you do then is press the set mode here. If you see set, press set, and then take your hand away. And uh, you can, you know, scratch your um, scratch your butt or whatever. What I find is after doing some hard riding in corners and you're kind of gripping onto the accelerator quite a lot, your hand can get quite fatigued. And I find that just after those really twisty, intense sections, I can slap on the cruise control and give you right hand a rest. Hey, and it's so relaxing, it really is. And then if you want to adjust the speed, then you just use the uh, the other sides of this rocker here down. And I think the uh, when you tap it once, it will go down a mile and a half per hour. If you tap it up, it'll go up a mile and a half per hour. It's very simple. Obviously there's no radar on this. It's not like in a car or some of the, some of the fancy BMWs which have radar uh, assisted cruise control and adapt the speed. So you really do have to keep an eye on things and disconnect it uh, when things start to slow down in front of you. But uh, yeah, I'll just engage again. It's so simple to use. Just uh, hit the button. It activates the, uh, the circuits, the time control circuits, as they say in Back to the Future. And then you uh, hit the set button and then you're off. And it really is so... And you, you wouldn't think you, you're still holding on to the, uh, the handlebars, but this is my first bike I've ridden with a cruise control. And it really is a revelation. It really is, especially after some intense riding. You can just slap this on and give your right hand a rest, which has no doubt been gripping the throttle a little bit harder, perhaps a little bit more tense. Your, your right forearm starts to tense up, doesn't it? The muscles in your right forearm, and it just relieves that. And so over longer distances, motorways, long open country roads, it really does make riding on the MT-09 even more of a, of a delight and uh, it stops you tiring out as well. If I change gear or activate the brakes or adjust the throttle, then the, uh, the traction control will disengage. Just like there, I hit the uh, tap the front brake there, it will disengage. So when you think about price in terms of the stock MT-09 over the MT-09 SP, it's a thousand pounds more. Yes, you do get your Olins, you do get your upgraded KYBs at the front and all the other finishing touches, but the cruise control is something that you should really think about, especially if you're doing longer commutes, longer journeys. If you're going to put luggage and panniers on the back of one of these bikes, go for this. The cruise control, which you can't upgrade apparently on the stock MT-09. You can't upgrade the cruise control. So it's this one I really do recommend just going for the SP. It's such a natural riding position. It's slightly sporty and aggressive, but without being wrist crushingly painful. Ooh, lots of mud on the road there. Ooh. Have I encountered any problems uh, on this new bike while I've been running it in, breaking it in? I must admit, I've had a couple of missed gears when I've been using the quick shifter, uh, coming up and down the gears a bit more aggressively, especially going up. It's like the gearing selected system has lost its way slightly and I have to engage the clutch and just sort it out. So I will mention that to Webbs, my, uh, my local Yamaha dealer where I bought the bike. But to be fair, I think most bikes do that. You go aggressive on the gears. Sometimes it can just uh, either jump a gear or just become a little bit phased and you have to hit engage the clutch and just sort things out. 
I'm just going to engage the uh, cruise control and uh, there we go. So you can use the cruise control even in these, you know, close up urban environments. And again, it just makes the journey wherever you're going a little bit easier. And even using the quick shifter at these very slow speeds, I'm 30 miles an hour, just coming up and down the quick shifter. I'm not pulling aggressively on the throttle. I can just flick that quick shifter up. It changes gear so easily. Some bikes you have to really pull hard on the throttle and really get the engine working to get the quick shifter to work as intended. But this is so... See there, fourth gear, fifth gear at 30 miles an hour. It really is a, a sublime little setup. Any other problems I've had with the bike? Not really, no. I've noticed at slow speeds when I'm really coming to a, the last few miles an hour of a stop, um, I do get a slight clunk towards the front of the, uh, the triple clamp here. I don't know what that is. It's a very slight clunk now and again. And uh, I will mention that to, uh, to Webbs, my Yamaha dealer. It's not a complaint. Again, it's just little things I've noticed, whether they things need tightening perhaps or loosening up. I don't know if it does it here. No, it doesn't do it here. Usually when I'm just engaging the brake slightly, a little knock sound, but um, I'll mention that. It's not a complaint. I don't feel that it's, uh, it's unsafe or anything at all. The dash itself is really easy to understand. Everything's nice and clear. The fonts and the graphics on the display are super crisp. There's no pixelization there. It doesn't look cheap at all. Now, some test riders have commented while testing the bike that uh, they can't really feel this rocker switch through the right thumb here. And uh, that's all well and good. All that does is change what is displayed on the, uh, on the setup here. You can change it to show the, the, the fuel gauge, mileometer, the lap timer. I find that once you've set these things in the garage at home, you don't really change them. So this is really, it's not really a problem at all. This uh, clutch lever is really nice and light. It's a really light clutch lever. Obviously, you don't really engage the clutch so much on the M09 because you've, you're taking advantage of that wonderful quick shifter, but it is super light, super easy. Just that one finger on the clutch there, just pulling away with one finger. It's so super light. It really does uh, feel great. And I also like on the SP, the, um, the finish that Yamaha have put onto these components. As you can see, while I uh, just let this truck get a bit of distance ahead. You can see on some of the components here, we've got this lovely brushed black paint finish on some of these components, obviously on the bar itself, on the, uh, on the levers, and uh, it really does add a nice quality finish. It really does feel premium. Now on the left hand here, you can see quite a number of buttons and gadgets. You've got your cruise control settings here, your uh, headlight adjustment beam there with the uh, indicator switch below that and the horn below that. What is a little bit tricky to find is the mode uh, switch and there's a mode switch you can just see there mode just on my right forefinger the, which is the, the passing uh, signal that you usually use to flash the front headlights is also the mode switch. So when you're cycling between the traction control mode and the riding mode then you use that to kind of confirm the changing of the mode. It just needs a bit of practice in the garage before you set out if you'd like to change those settings on the fly. I've not really changed the traction control settings since I've had it. Again, while I'm in the braking in period, it's not really worth it to be fair. So yeah, there's a lot of buttons here to, uh, to learn and to get your head round. Again, if you really are interested in seeing a quick video across all of the control systems and the heads up display and the screen, then please drop a comment below and I'll make a little video for you. But you do get used to it, it is quite self-explanatory. These two switches here, just on the top of the left thumb, below the, uh, the wing mirror here, control the, uh, the riding mode that you're in. If you can see I'm in mode two right now, if I close the throttle, mode one, mode two, mode three. What I also like about the MT-09 is it turns on a dime. I thought the Triumph Trident turned on a dime, but this also turns on a real dime, it's so, uh, get those tight corners and drop it down a gear, use the engine braking and the bike really shifts around those corners so easily, those tight corners, drop it down to second, use the engine braking. Most bikes are either a bit lean towards the sporty side of things or the comfort side of things or the you know, the everyday and when, when bikes are the everyday kind of thing they're a bit you know, not as exciting, but this is such a, an exciting, well-rounded machine. 
full of all the latest technology. Now, yes, I mean, some people might not like the front end of the bike. They might think the front light is hideous, but it's fresh, it's new. And uh, the riding experience alone, which is really the important part of owning the bike, the riding experience is just first rate. It really is uh, a top quality riding experience, but it's capable of so many things, you know, riding slow, cruising through the urban areas, you know, going on the back country roads and, you know, using that quick shifter and going up and down the gears, throwing it into corners, doing the longer distance, engaging the cruise control. Now, I think I would put a screen on this, but, but to be fair though, the wind blast isn't that bad. I've been on other naked bikes and so the wind blast has been quite, uh, you know, erratic and turbulent in this area and it kind of, you feel it around your chest and your head and your head's wobbling about the place. But this, compared to the Trident, for example, I felt I was sitting on the bike, but with this MT-09, I feel I'm sitting in the bike. You know, the, the, the tank is quite broad and you're kind of sitting in it. And so the wind blast isn't as erratic, it's not as turbulent. So from a naked point of view, a naked bike point of view, it's certainly not uh, an uncomfortable naked experience. Let's, uh, let's give it some, shall we? Woo! You know when you uh, you buy a motorcycle and you uh, you just know you've made the right choice. When I ride this bike, I know I've made the right choice. What an awesome machine! Some of you might be asking, uh, have I adjusted any of the suspension settings? I will say I have not. The uh, the suspension setup on the MT9 SP, you can adjust a lot of things, including you know preload rebound compression. There's lots of dial. There's a dial down near the uh, the, the calipers. You've got the adjustments here. And obviously there's various adjustments you could do on the rear shock. I will admit, I've read the instruction manual, but I don't know entirely what it all means. So I'm perhaps going to uh, speak to a mechanic and talk about getting the bike set up, you know, for my size and weight to make sure it's done correctly. Because I know it's quite easy to mess up these, these settings. A lot of people have said to me, you know, if you do start adjusting things, try and remember the number of clicks that you've done in order to go back to the base setting. So. I haven't adjusted the suspension. I don't feel that there's a need to right now, but it's definitely something I'm quite interested in doing because obviously the bike can be adjusted. So it will be quite cool to, to take this to a professional mechanic and say, look, you know, set the bike up to, uh, to suit my weight and uh, riding style and all of that kind of good stuff. Into second, single finger braking, bring the bike over. Tight corner, tight line through that corner. Up the box, down again, down again, down into second, down into first. Just bringing it around, feeling that power on that rear. The front wants to lift, you can feel that front wanting to lift up there. The, uh, the MT-09, both the stock and the, the uh, SP have the um, front wheel lift technology, so the bike is constantly monitoring what's going on in terms of you know, measuring the various forces against the machine. Let's, let's do a quick U-turn just to show you how easy it is, despite the very narrow um, turning circle. Let's just, let's just go around here. So you know, it's very, it really is easy. You've, you, even though I felt it was quite a tight lock when I first tested the, uh, the stock MT, it's certainly something you can get used to. So will there be any other modifications to the MT-09 SP in the near future? Um, I'm really, I cannot think of any, apart from perhaps maybe the wing mirrors, maybe some bar in mirrors might look a bit trick. <laughs> this guy in front, he's got uh, an Umbrella Corporation logo. Let's get a bit close, look at that, that's awesome. For all you Resident Evil fans, I'm a big Resident Evil fan. Resident Evil 2, my favourite Resident Evil of all time. So there you have a quick update 
of, as to how things are going, my first 600 miles on the MT9 SP from Yamaha. I have no regrets in purchasing this bike. It is the perfect bike for me. It allows me to do all, everything I want to do and more. The first 600 miles have been an absolute delight. There's a couple of little maybe knocks here and just things I'd like to see uh, where to bring to the attention of uh, Yamaha just to make sure they're okay and things are okay but there's no malfunctions there's no leaks or anything it is you know atypical Yamaha quality finish and reliability it's due its first service in a few days time and after that I'm really looking forward to uh, stretching the engine and finding some new limits to chase if you are looking at the MT-09 SP or the stock MT-09, do go for a test ride. They, uh, they, they really do make you think twice about what bike you're going to buy next. So I do hope you've enjoyed this update on the first 600 miles. And what are your comments? What are your thoughts on this bike? Have you bought the MT-09 or the MT-09 SP yourself? Have you encountered any issues during the braking in process? Please drop a comment below uh, and join the discussion. So if you have enjoyed the video today and you are new around here, then please make sure to subscribe to see more MT-09 SP content. If you have enjoyed the video, please give a thumbs up to support the channel. Your support is always appreciated. I've been Eddie Set Go. I hope you ride safe. Stay safe. I'll see you next time.